All right, so if you've been paying any attention to the financial news, you know the recession predictions are starting to pile up. Deutsche Bank, Elon Musk, and Jamie Dimon all say a recession could be on the horizon, but what exactly will that mean for you? In this video, I'm going to talk about what my life looked like during the last Great Recession of 2008, how I survived it, and what you can do exactly to prepare for the economic slowdown. I'm also gonna let you in on things I don't think you should worry about even if a recession does end up happening. Now, if you're younger than 30, you might actually be surprised to learn about some of the weird similarities between then and the last Great Recession. For you older guys and gals out there, let me know if my memory of this time period is accurate too. So as background, during 2008, I was a recent college grad. At the time, I had a job working at a small online marketing agency. I was in Orange County, California, and I was roughly $53,000 in student loan, credit card debt, and making only about 32 grand a year when I started the job. Needless to say, I had no 401k at the time. I had zero savings, no assets to speak of, aside from a uh, bass guitar and a little bit of music equipment that I owned. I was renting a room for about 550 bucks a month at the time in someone else's condo, and definitely surviving just paycheck to paycheck, it sucked. Now, the thing I found so weird about the time period leading up to the Great Recession, at that time, the economy in 2007 was technically booming. Everything was supposed to be great according to everything you heard in the news. The stock market was strong, the housing market was strong, you know, until it wasn't and then everything was terrible. But in my personal situation, I was already saddled with debt before the economy quote unquote officially hit a recession and I wasn't participating in the good times anyways. Which brings me to the good news for you. If you are broke right now and barely making ends meet in your day-to-day -day life, it's probably not gonna change that much once we head into a recession if we do, as long as you're able to remain employed and keep the basic bills paid. Now, when the 2008 economic crisis officially hit, it didn't hit my day-to-day -day life really at all. It didn't impact it. I didn't have any investments. I didn't own a home. Therefore, I didn't have much to lose financially. And it was just, you know, that things seemed worse at first because it was in the news. And in a strange way, if you're broke already, you can take comfort in knowing that things might not look that much different for you if we do end up going into a recession. Now, here's the bad news for you. Here are the things you are gonna need to worry about as an ordinary working class Joe, you know, like I would describe myself, I think we are seeing some of the same things play out right now. Now, similar to what we are seeing right now with energy prices, you know, gas being really high, back in 2008, we saw a big increase in gas prices too. This really sucked for me since I was paying well over $4 per gallon in Southern California at the time. That would seem cheap now, but at the time it was uh, really expensive. And thankfully, I will say, I was driving a 2005 Ford Focus that got pretty good gas mileage at the time. But still, when you're on a limited budget like that, all your paycheck is basically going towards bills. And you know, paying $50 to fill up a gas tank instead of $20, it still puts a dent in your budget. Especially if you've got to drive to work five days a week in bumper to bumper traffic like happens in Southern California. But you don't have a lot of options when you're working. Of course, I had to keep driving to work so I could continue to pay a paycheck or continue to collect a paycheck. I didn't have any choice there. The best advice I can offer is to find a way to make more money to cover these expenses. It sounds simple, but you know, get a part time job, start a side hustle, find a way to figure out how to get more cash coming in. Energy prices aside, there's another big shift that happened in this time period in 2008. We saw a sudden surge in layoffs. Here's what these layoffs look like at the company I was working at. One day, out of the blue, my employer started calling all the employees into the HR manager's office one by one. Each employee, after we were called in, was essentially presented with one of two options at this meeting. Option one, we get a two-week severance package and be shown the door. And option two was we'd be told that we were allowed to keep our job and continue working for the time being. I remember it was about 30 minutes before lunchtime when my name was finally called into the HR manager's office. I waited for 
dozens of other employees to go in there before me. You know, I was sweating, I took a deep breath, and I just braced for the news, whatever it was gonna be then. You know, fortunately at the time, the HR manager informed me I would get to remain with the company for the next stage or phase of the business that went through. You know, I thank the HR manager. Let out a huge sigh of relief, because if I lost my job, I wouldn't have been able to survive even a month without a paycheck, right? And of course, the same scene was playing out all across America and all sorts of different businesses at that time too. According to the New York Times, there were 2.6 million jobs lost in 2008 alone. This was the most jobs lost since 1945. Now let's fast forward back to today and we're beginning to see some cracks in employment too. For example, tech companies like PayPal, Coinbase, and Robinhood have all announced layoffs already. And also companies serving the mortgage industry have seen huge layoffs. We'll see if this trend continues, but here's my advice for you right now. Get your resume up to date. Start applying to jobs proactively right away if your company starts going through a wave of lay layoffs. More often than not, there's more than one wave of layoffs. So if it starts, you know, get your resume updated. This is the same thing that happened back in 2008. You know, a lot of people thought they were safe from getting laid off, but they still, you know, lost their job. They were hard to find at that time. And but eventually, if you put yourself out there, you're gonna get uh, hired. And this is exactly what I did too. I started sending out resumes as soon as the first wave of people started getting laid off. A lot of my coworkers, they thought they were safe and, and they weren't, they were blindsided. I just don't believe in sitting around hoping you don't get laid off. I would stay on the offensive during this time and try to find a company that can weather the economic storm that may be ahead. So, you know, just update your resume, try to find something more stable before you get laid off. You wanna utilize that time if possible. Again, now is also a good time to start looking for other ways to make money. Start your side hustle now, get a gig on Fiverr. Uh, let, we'll talk about that more in future videos. Learn how to make money in a different way than getting a regular paycheck. It's better to start doing this before you're laid off and need money right away so you can figure this stuff out when you're under less financial stress. And spoiler alert, the first thing you might try might not work out. I started working on my first website during the last Great Recession. I didn't become a millionaire from it, but I was able to build you know, my first couple websites, make a few hundred bucks in a month, and I didn't get rich off of it, but the experience helped me build a foundation for what I would later create in life in you know the food businesses that I operate now, or the food business websites that I operate now, I should say. Now, here's the final impact that I personally experienced during the last recession. This is another shift I think could happen in the coming months and something you need to pay attention to if you are in debt right now. Now, during the last recession, credit got cut way back and interest rates increased. This is already starting to happen right now too. So as I mentioned, I was pretty much maxed out on my credit cards. I never had a huge credit line <laughs> given to me, fortunately. I probably had in the range of about $7,000 between two cards and those were totally maxed out. And I would use them actually regularly even to buy food from Del Taco or pay for gas before I got my bi-weekly paycheck. I'd maybe have like each month after making a payment, like 50 bucks of leeway in there. And what happened to me one of the days is I got a letter in the mail that the interest rate on my cards would increase even further the next month if I wanted to keep the card. You know, I also got my credit line on these cards cut during this time period and of course, the credit card offers stopped coming in to me too, so I couldn't transfer the bill to another card temporarily. At that time, I decided just to cancel my credit cards so that my interest rates wouldn't increase. Obviously, I still had to pay back that debt over time at the old rate. That's just the decision that I made because I didn't want to pay an even higher rate uh, than what I was already paying. Uh, this really felt like being kicked when I was down, and it really was, since I was using that to make ends meet. And I wouldn't be surprised one bit if this happens to people again with credit cards later this year. So long story short, if you can pay down that debt right now, don't take on any new credit card debt, if at all possible. If things start to tighten up with credit, you're gonna be glad that you took this action. All this being said, you can survive this coming recession. Do what you can to prepare and find ways to make more money and pay off debt right now. And remember, if you're younger, an economic downturn won't hurt you as much as older people who have assets, houses, 401ks. My parents, for example, just retired this month. And if there's a big downturn in the economy, especially with the stock markets, which there already has been a big drop, uh, it's gonna seriously cut into their net worth. The older you are, the more at risk you are since you don't have as much time, as much energy, of course, to recover from a downturn. So let 
me know in the comments what you're doing to prepare for this next phase. Do you even think we're heading into recession or uh, is this just like a little bit of a slowdown that's coming up? I'd love to hear your perspective on what's happening in the economy and what you're doing to prepare. So YouTube, let me know what you think.